Hello, welcome back to my uh, wildlife friendly garden. Uh, so it's a gorgeous day, we've had an amazing run of weather for March. Uh, forgive the chainsaw in the distance by the way. Uh, uh, it's the perfect time to prep your, your bee hotels, there's a whole bunch of them behind me. Um, because the, the bees that use them will be coming out soon and you might be interested in taking part in the uh, the Buzz Club's Big Bee Hotel experiment if you want to help out with some citizen science intended to help us find out. Oh, but let me just interrupt. Not the dog, it's the bee. It's dashing around. Don't know whether you can see it. That was a male hairy-footed flower bee, which brings me rather disjointedly to, to what I was here to talk about. Uh, so last year I trialled a bee hotel aimed at hairy-footed flower bees, which are one of my favourite solitary bees, but they don't go in normal bee hotels. Um, and that's because they, they like to nest in clay banks and they like to tunnel in but then make side branches with them, make their little chambers which they fill with pollen for their offspring. And they obviously can't do that in a wooden hotel like this one. Um, whereas this design, which is basically clay packed into a wooden box, you could in invent your own version of that, but that's all basically what it is. Um, I tried it out last spring for the first time and it was really successful. There are loads of hairy-footed flower bees in here that will be emerging very soon. Um, so because it was so successful I've made a much bigger version and I would urge you to have a go yourself and let me know how you get on. Um, so this this is not beautiful, I'm not going to win any prizes. Um, but this is, the last one had uh, 17 holes, this one has 60 holes, same design, just scaled up. It's quite heavy, I have to say, um, but uh, it's really easy to do. So just to, just to reiterate, um, I've just made a wooden box. It's obviously it's kind of similar to a, a bird box, um, but without the front. And then I just rammed the whole thing solid with clay. And which you could probably, if you live on a clay soil, you could probably dig from the garden, but I had some old pottery clay left over. And then I left it to dry for a couple of days and then got a 10 millimeter drill bit and drilled loads of holes, which is very easy while the clay is still damp. Uh, it's cracked a bit, but I don't think the bees are gonna care. And the wood has warped slightly from being next to the wet clay. As I say, I'm not a great carpenter, but I'm pretty sure it'll do the job. And with luck, um, we'll get the female hairy-footed flower bees, which are very different to the males. The males are brown, females are jet black with yellow hind legs. Uh, they'll be the ones hopefully using these tunnels. Now I'll, I'll film them when they are, arrive and show you that. So if you want hairy-footed flower bees in your garden, you just really need two things. You need one of these for them to nest in, and then I'll just show you. Not the dog. Hello Poppy. Over here, sorry, bear with me as I trundle across the garden. Pullman area. I've got little clumps of it dotted around. It's just beginning to flower. And at times it's flowering almost as if it were aiming to coincide with the hairy footed flower bees. So it looks a bit straggly and unimpressive at the moment, but in a couple of weeks it'll be much bigger. And, uh, uh, and hopefully it'll be a buzz with hairy footed flower bees. And it's as simple as that, they just need flowers and somewhere to nest. So give it a go. Um, and uh, I'll let you know how my nest gets on, whether I get lots of residents. Uh, and between us, hopefully, we can um, encourage this beautiful uh, solitary bee. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay, until next time, if you want to get an update on my hairy-footed flower bee nest, then uh, remember to subscribe. Bye!